invented arguably by the Romans in the 4th century to heat public baths, underflow heating is an ancient yet modern heating system. In our present day, a hydronic flow heating system is actually loops of fixed piping running under our floors and having water flowing inside of them. The warm water heats the floor and in turn the floor heats the room. A fairly simple yet ingenious idea. And you know what would also be a great idea? Smashing the subscribe button to enjoy future engineering videos like this. So a basic floor heating system would look something like this. A heating source to provide the thermal energy needed to heat a space. A temperature control mechanism to control the temperature of water reaching the floor loops. And finally the loops themselves to deliver the warmth to the floor and in turn to the room space. But before we elaborate on the different elements that make up the underfloor heating system, let's understand how heating up the floor of a room leads to us feeling warm and comfortable. According to the second law of thermodynamics, when a certain object is hotter than another object, heat will flow from the hotter object to the colder one. In our case, the hotter object is the floor, and the room with what it contains is the colder object. The heat transfer between them happens mostly via two methods. One, radiation, and two, convection. Radiation is simply heating through waves. Any object with a temperature above absolute zero will emit electromagnetic waves. So heat up a room floor and it will radiate its heat to the surrounding objects. You can see it easily with the naked eye at high temperatures with steel for example. The same does happen with floor heating except that the waves in our case are on the lower infrared part and are not on the visible spectrum side. But out of the objects heated through radiation, the room air is not one of them. And that's because radiation goes through air like a knife through butter. This is where convection goes to work. Convection is heat transfer due to moving fluids. Initially, the room air is still, or at least will assume it to be. The floor with the objects heated via radiation will heat the air through conduction. The heated air expands and buoyant forces will force air moving across itself and the heated bodies. Convection is now created and soon the resident will feel the warmth from the air and radiation combined which the body interprets as comfort. Now let's dive deeper into how we arrive at a heated floor. We consider a simple case of a room to be heated using the floor heated system. Now an actual underfloor heating system would have many components which if I were to explain all together would seem difficult. So allow me to divide any floor heating system into two parts or circuits circulating water. The first circuit is a space heating circuit running under the floor, which I refer to as the warm circuit. It is the part of the system responsible for the actual heating of the space and maintaining comfort temperature. It circulates water at warm temperatures, usually between 35 and 55 degrees Celsius, and exchanges the warmth with the space. In our case, it'll be 45 degrees Celsius. The second circuit is a temperature regulating circuit, which I refer to as the hot circuit. It is the part of the system responsible for heating and regulating the temperature of the water in the warm circuit. It produces water at high temperatures and exchanges its heat with the warm circuit in a controlled manner to maintain a temperature between 35 and 55 degrees Celsius. I'll explain why shortly but for now let's begin with the warm circuit. The warm circuit is almost always the same for all underfloor heating systems. It is composed of the following components. 1. Heating loops. The lines you're seeing right here. Now let's take a closer look at them through this close-up. They are embedded circuits under the floor, usually made up of flex piping covered with thermal screed above a layer of thermal insulation that forces heat flow towards the floor. 2. A manifold, which collects the main warm water and divides it to the multiple heating loops. The heating loops branch from and return to this manifold. Each supply slash return set has both a flow regulating device to set the flow value initially and an electric valve for switching the loop on and off. 3. And finally, the room thermostat which determine if there is a need for heating. Now let's see the components in action. Warm water arrives at the branches of the manifold at the set flow and temperature and awaits the electrical valve to allow it to circulate through the loops. The valves in turn are waiting for each thermostat to give the heating order. It's winter and the rooms are cold so the thermostats order the valves to open and hot water starts flowing through the loops. After some time the floor starts heating up and the radiation slash convection combination begins heating the room while the average temperature recorded by the thermostats starts to rise. In a while comfort temperature is reached and the thermostats order the valves to close and stop heating. In time, the temperature will drop back down and the same cycle will repeat. 
And that's basically the space heating part and it is a common amongst most heating systems. Now let's move on to the second part which I refer to as the hot circuit. It is actually what heats, regulates and pumps the water in the warm circuit. It can vary between different designers depending on the situation and the preference of the designer. This circuit is present because having high temperature water in the warm circuit will cause damage to the flooring and discomfort. Things which we don't want. And usually, houses have a central boiler that needs to heat up many secondary systems such as a hot water storage tank, radiator systems, pool heating, etc. And all these secondary systems require different temperatures, some higher than the underfloor heating temperatures. Therefore, it is hard to force the boiler temperature to what the underfloor heating system requires. I will explain a common type of this circuit, but keep in mind that not all systems operate the same, although in spirit they are all similar. Our hot circuit will be of the central heat exchanger type, and its main components are 1. A boiler, the main source of heating. 2. A circulating pump located directly after the boiler. We call it the hot pump. 3. A three-way diverting valve installed after the hot pump with a sensor measuring the temperature of the warm circuit. It branches into two possible positions, heating and bypass. 4. A heat exchanger, which is the part which connects the hot circuit with the warm circuit, in a non-mixing way of course. 5. A second circulating pump located after the heat exchanger from the side of the warm circuit. We call it the warm pump. So as we did for the heating circuit, let's check out how this subsystem operates. The boiler begins by checking for a demand for heating that can be triggered by any of the room thermostats. If triggered, it will ignite and begin heating the water while the hot pump is running and circulating the water. The water reaches the wet three-way valve. At the same time, the warm pump, still cold at the moment, is also running and circulating water through the heat exchanger and the warm circuit. The sensor of the three-way valve measures the temperature of the water flowing in the warm circuit. It finds that the temperature is below the heating temperature, which we had considered to be 45 degrees Celsius. The three-way valve will assume a heating position and allow high temperature water from the boiler to enter the heat exchanger and provide heat to the warm circuit. After some time, the water flowing in the warm circuit has reached a few degrees above 45. The sensor detects this and the three-way valve assumes bypass position and redirects the hot water back to the boiler instead of the heat exchanger. The warm circuit temperature increase now stops. The thermal energy of the warm circuit is now being exchanged with the rooms and they start gaining temperature. Not yet comfort temperature but truly headed there. The warm circuit water on the other hand starts dropping in temperature and continues until it reaches a few degrees below 45. The sensor again detects this and the three-way valve reassumes the heating position and the sequence will repeat. After some iterations, the room temperature would reach the comfort temperature and the call for heating is no longer present. The electric valves at the manifold close and the bumps and boilers shut off. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video and see you in later videos. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hussein, out.